I thank God this morning that as I got up for the, the welcome and I walked down on the floor, I saw my cousin. And my cousin has, Belinda, if you're here, stand up. And my cousin has been through a long fight. She, years ago, she, she's right over there, years ago, she lost her son to gun violence. Some people live in neighborhoods that are extremely dangerous. But for me to get up and come down and to see my cousin here lets me know that God is coming for the whole family. Let me say this to you. Sometimes you might not even know what your stance in God means to other people. Sometimes you might not even know, even if people never tell you, that your stance for him means something. And you can rest in God because he does it through you. I'm also happy to see this morning my niece, Morgan Winters. It's her birthday. She turned 13. Morgan, she's visiting with us. Come on, Morgie. Stand up. She said, Uncle O, I'm going to church with you guys this morning. I like it. And so we are glad that, that Morgan is here uh, this morning. Amen. The title of today's message is Training for Reigning. Write that down. Write that down. Training for Reigning. If you can, turn in your Bibles to uh, Romans chapter Five. <clears throat> we'll read from verse six. Let's look to the Lord for prayer. Father, we thank you. We pray for a spirit of wisdom, oh God. We pray for a spirit of revelation. We pray for the spirit of counsel and the spirit of might to be upon me this morning. We pray that the atmosphere, the atmosphere would change even the more at the hearing of your word. We even pray this morning that faith would be stirred up, that folks in the building this morning would know that every crooked place is going to be made straight. Come on, everything is going to be made straight in your life. We thank you, O oh Lord, that things, come on, things are being reconciled for you, things that are out of order, things that are not right. They're going to be reconciled. They're moving in your favor. Come on, we thank God for the grace. He's beautiful for every situation. We thank him right now for the grace that he's imparting to us. Even now, we receive it by faith. Come on, we receive it by faith. We receive the grace of God to get ahead of our circumstances. We receive the grace of God to transform and to change. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And somebody say, Amen. Amen. So I want to talk to you uh, briefly this morning about training for reigning and how you can build your life around what's most important. Now, when you build your life around things that are most important, Second things are not suppressed, but they are increased. In other words, when you live your life around what matters most, it gives perspective to anything that matters at all. Let me say that to you again. When you build your life around what matters most, it gives perspective to anything that matters all. Am I talking? And so... This morning, I want to empower you to embrace the reality of what the Father has already done. Somebody say, already done. And so many of us, we have challenges because our lives are filled with drama. Some of us were born in drama. Some of us came in, up in households where the father didn't like you, nor did he love you. And you, real, and, you, and you wanted to understand why there were situations where 
you seem like you were the odd man or the odd girl out. That's drama. To go to school and feel like you are not accepted, to feel like you are an outcast, that's drama. To live in a world that makes you confused about who you are and confused about your sexuality and confused about whether or not you can make it and confused uh, about whether or not you have the right skin color or whether you were born in the right community, in the right home. There's confusion in the land and all of that confusion creates drama. Drama is when you live your life searching for approval and if you can't get it from your father or you can't get it from your mother, you go on social media and search for likes. You want somebody to like you. You want somebody to love you. So you say, I'm lurking on the gram. I'm searching on Facebook. I'm in the comment books because I'm living out drama. And God shows up to settle the drama. And when he settles you, he might say, you might have lost your husband. You might have lost your wife. You might have even lost your job or lost your kids. But there's still something that I want to say to you about you. Because if you live your life defined by your, your money, if you live your life defined by your status, by your prestige, then when all of that changes, you feel like you have nothing. So God is saying, I want to speak to you about an elevated identity that I have for you. Oh my God. Let me say this to you again. He's saying that I want to speak to you about an elevated identity. In other words, the identity that I have for you is beyond your career. The identity that I have for you is beyond your money. The identity I have for you is beyond your neighborhood. Whether it was a whether it was a beautiful community or whether it was a ghetto, he's saying that who I, who I uh, designed you to be, somebody say to be, who I designed you to be is beyond all of it. And when you embrace it, it can reconcile how you've had to live. Oh my God. In other words, when you embrace who he said you are. It reconciles what happened. Now, I don't have time to go into what happened to you, but you know what happened to you. But when you embrace, somebody say embrace. When you embrace who you are in God, it reconciles what happened. It reconciles what your father did or did not do. Somebody talk to me. It reconciles what your mother did or did not do. It reconciles it. In other words, it makes up the difference. Why? So you can go on. Uh, it makes up the difference so you can live. So... To put it short, he calls you his sons and his daughters. Write that down. You are a son and you are a daughter of God. And if you are a son or a daughter of God, then that makes him your father. And who he is as your father 
supersedes anything your natural father could ever do for you. In other words, he already planned your life. In other words, he already set you up. He already loaded your bank account. He already provided an inheritance for you. But if you don't know it, if you, excuse me, if you don't know who you are, you can't claim your rights. So here's what the scripture says. Verse 6, for when we were without strength, my God, in due time, Christ, which means the anointed king, underline that, he died for the ungodly. For scarcely will a righteous man will one die. In other words, he's saying that, he's saying that for a righteous man, it's scarce to find anybody that will die for somebody that's doing right. Then he says, yet perhaps for a good man, some will even dare to die. But God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were sinners, Christ, the anointed king, died for us, verse 9, much more than having now been justified by his blood. In other words, the blood of Christ supersedes your natural blood. In other words, the blood of Christ justifies you. In other words, the blood of Christ speaks in heaven for you. In other words, when God saw the blood of Christ that was shed for you, he said, I'll take his life instead of your life. His life will be exchanged for your life. So you have to find your life in him. God, am I talking to somebody? Your life, Bishop, is found in him. That's why the scripture says, in him we in him we move and have our being. In him we have our identity. So I can't find out about myself if I don't know the anointed king. That's why everybody's out here saying, live your best life. Uh, find your bliss, find your best self. Uh, but I can't find my best self outside of the God who created me before I was in my mother's womb. So when I find my best self, I still fall short of what God intended for me because I didn't find him. But when you find him, watch me, when you find him, you get everything, even though it's not in manifestation yet. When you, I want to say this to you again. When you find him, you've already won. When you find him, you're already victorious. When you, God, somebody help me. When you find him, you already are the head and not the tail. When you find him, you become clean. When you find him, you become justified. So that means that no matter the devil had a case against you, you were guilty. You were condemned to death. But Jesus stepped in the box. He's the judge, jury, and the lawyer. He steps in the box and said, we got to throw this case out. Acquitted of all charges. Free, come on, you see, some of y'all never been in court before. Let me talk to some people that have been in court. 
<laughs> Some of y'all never had to go down to City Hall, get on the elevator, and you feel shame, and you, you feel guilt, and you're, you're nervous, and you're, you, you, you're sweating, and you no, I don't want any water until after this is over. I, I, I wonder what the judge is going to say. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I want to make sure I'm there in time. And you in your seat, waiting for the verdict. And you scared. Please, God, please, please, please let this work out for me. Please, no, oh, please, please let this thing work out for me. I promise I was. <laughs> See, you got to understand if you don't understand what he did for you. If you don't understand what he did for you, you always live beneath. And your life will become, I could have. Man, I should have. Man, why didn't I? Man, didn't you know I had it? But God is trying to straighten you out. He already knows what happened. So he comes in the courtroom and says, all charges are thrown out. The case against you is dismissed. I speak by the spirit. Go home. Go home and sin no more. Go, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Go home and allow me to capture your gaze. Go home and allow me to capture your heart because you're free now. Somebody said, I is free now. <laughs> Isn't that what we teach? Yeah. He that the sun sets free. is free what? Oh, my goodness. Now watch this. For if we were, verse 10, for if we were enemies, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. The only thing that's going to save you is his life. God. We shall be, watch this, we shall be saved by his what? His life. His, what does that mean? The God quality of life. The God type life. In other words, God deposits a life to you that comes from him. And it is only his life that can save you. Now, 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 now watch this. We're used to being saved from stuff. But you, but you got to get to a point where you start to get saved into something. I just didn't get saved from uh, uh, sin and, and drinking and doing all this, but he's trying to bring you into something. God, help somebody. See, see, much of your struggle is that you got saved from it, but you ain't never come into it. And see, the devil messes with you because you ain't never come into your stuff. You still trying to figure out whether you saved or not. Come to church on Sunday. Then by Thursday night, you wonder whether you saved. <laughs> Are you here? And, 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 and most pastors around the country got to convince you and persuade you to every week to believe that you saved. So you can't go on to the higher dimensions of the spirit. 
Because you have to embrace that his life is my life. His life saved me. And if his life saved me, that no matter what I go through, I'm all right. Now, it, now, now watch this. It might not have worked out the way I wanted it to work out. God, let me tell you this. God will have you go through a process where what you thought, what you intended for your life is not what he intended. That's why you got to learn how to obey. That's why you got to learn how to yield. That's why you got to learn how to surrender because if he planned it, if he planned it, then he knows how to get you through. You don't know how to get you, yourself through because you went through some stuff where you told yourself, God, I hope I don't die tonight if you get me home. Verse 11, and not only that, but we rejoice. Underline that word rejoice. I just want to say something quickly about this. One of the things that sabotages us from ever reigning the way that God wants us to reign is ingratitude. There are some people that would kill to be in your spot. And you keep telling yourself that your spot is nothing. But if you would shift and say, yes, this happened to me, but I'm thankful. That's why he said giving of, the, giving of thanks is the will of God. Because thanksgiving gets your mind in a place where you can receive what else he has for you. So that's why he says, enter into his courts with praise and thanksgiving because thanks, thankfulness, gratitude sets you up for your next step. So if I were the devil, I would make sure you always complain. I would make you dissatisfied with your apartment. I would make you dissatisfied with your two-bedroom house. I would make you dissatisfied with your children. I would make you dissatisfied with your school and how you look and all of this stuff and how you feel. But he's saying, is there anything you can thank me for? Because it's... Remember I got you downtown on two miles of gas? Remember that you didn't even know how to apply for school when you graduated. Remember you, couldn't, you didn't even think you could get a bachelor's degree, but you got a PhD. Remember you had a hole in your roof and you thought everything was going to fall apart and I got you that house. Remember when you, you, remember when you didn't have any clothes. Uh, remember when you couldn't afford that Gucci belt. Remember when you couldn't even... Somebody talk to me. Uh, <laughs> Remember when you couldn't even buy your children's sneakers? Or remember when you were going to the neighbor's house to get a sandwich? And now you're eating caviar. And now you are downtown and you can't thank me? That's what rejoicing is about. No, I don't have everything. No, everything is not right, but I rejoice. Oh, I'm above ground today. I'm rejoicing. Oh, I can, I can tie my shoes today. I'm rejoicing. Oh, I can breathe today. I'm rejoicing. Uh, oh, I can walk today. Uh, remember when you couldn't walk? Uh, oh, I got a transplant. But, 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 but watch this. Remember you were next to somebody that didn't get a transplant. They died. But you lived. <laughs> they died. <laughs> somebody would say to you, that person died. Uh, remember you were on the operate. Remember when you were on the operating table. And you closed your eyes. And you came out and said, what happened? <laughs> Tell your neighbor what happened. Remember.
remember when you thought you was dead. Uh, remember when you thought you were finished. Remember when you tried to take yourself out and it didn't work. The cops came. Uh, the neighbor came. Uh, somebody knocked on the door. The mailman looked in and he saw what was going on. That was God. Uh, and you said, what happened? And you, watch this, watch this. Remember you didn't have a job. In the job that you now have, you complaining about that job. Remember you begged God for a spouse. And now you hate your spouse. But you hate the one you begged for. Rejoice, I say. And again, I say. See, 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 God will take you through some stuff where he will help you remember. And when he, watch this, and when he helps you remember, he said, am I not owed thanks? Hear me, write this down. Your thanksgiving positions you for the next step. Selah. Verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin, sin entered into the world and death through sin. Uh-oh, now watch me here. Sin, whether you like the sin, you do realize that there's some sin that you like. I'm going to look over here. I'm going to look up here. I need some water. I need some water. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't want, do y'all want me to talk? Do y'all want me to talk? Got me up here choking. There's some sin you like. Now, I heard a man of God say it this way. Remember all sin, which means to miss God's mark. All sin is death. Just because you didn't physically die don't mean you ain't dying. Just do this, ain't nothing gonna happen. She ain't gonna find out. He ain't gonna find out. But meanwhile, the sin is killing you. See, I told you nothing was going to happen. You're still alive. See, people don't hate the sin, they hate the wages. The Bible tells you that sin, they said the wages of sin is death. They like the sin, but they don't like the, they don't like the wages, the payout. For every sin, there's a payout. That's why you got to thank God for Jesus. Because he takes away the penalty, the debt that you owed for what your father did, Adam and Eve. So what they did transferred to everybody. So you then become a slave to your lower nature. Even if you don't want to do it, you're enslaved to your lower nature. You're enslaved to the worst about you. And so Jesus sets you free from the worst about you. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. See, see sin is not only rebellion against God. It is, an, it is an attempt to replace God. 
Now remember this. Anything that rules over you other than God is going to be a harsh king. It's going to make you pay for more than what you bargained for. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, you ever been, you ever gotten to some stuff and you realize, I didn't think I was going to pay that much. You ever go to a store and you had what you thought was a lot of money. And when you came out, you said, Dad, I don't really have that much anymore. I didn't come out here thinking I was going to spend that much. That's how sin gets you. Have you spending more than you intended? And guess what? When you spend so much, it'll bankrupt you. You'll, loo you'll lose your family over that stuff. You'll lose your kids over that stuff. You'll lose everything because of the sin problem. Jesus is the only God. He is the only spiritual entity that deals with what's killing us. He goes right to the heart of the matter. This thing right here is going to kill you. And once it jumps from you, it's going to try to kill your son. That's why when, when the children of Israel wanted a king, i.e. Saul, he said, I'm already your king. Why would you want a king? Because this king is going to take your children. This king is going to abuse everything that you've brought in. In other words, this system is going to undermine everything that you worked for, everything that you built up. If you allow him to be king over you, he will undermine everything. He said, that's why I don't want him to be king. But here's the interesting thing. You have to pay attention to God in the scriptures. If you plead with him enough, he said, give them what they're asking for. You pray for it. Do you, you, you really want that? He's telling you, don't, don't, I wouldn't keep asking for that. You're not even prepared for that. You're not even, you, you ever have something, you ever see somebody not even prepared for what came? And so he's saying that I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even ask for that because that king is going to be a harsh king. Are you with me? So he says here, now here's, here's one of the things that we don't often mention when we think of sin. We don't mention idolatry. The worship of yourself or things that you exalt higher than God. I was reading a book by Henry Louis Gates, a Harvard professor, and he talked about his life growing up in West Virginia. And he said, I grew up with an aunt. She worshiped education. She didn't just love it, but she worshiped at the throne of education. She worshiped education more than she did God. And so we have to be conscious of the things that we allow to be idols in our lives because those things ultimately wind up bringing death. Now watch this. Verse 13, I'm going to move through this quickly. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed. I'm verse 13, where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam. In other words, he's saying that because of what happened in the beginning, all, all have sinned. And he said, but the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the, the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment came from one offense and it resulted into condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by one man's offense, if by one 
man's offense, death reigned through the one. In other words, he's saying the world is getting exactly what they're set up for. We live in a world that is set up to receive death. But it's masked in pride. It deceives you. In other words, it's, it's, it's like colored water. And you think it's the best wine but it's only colored water. So he said death, the word reign means to be in rulership. Death reigned. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in this life through the one Jesus Christ. I want you to get that for me. Here's the reality. The reality is that through Jesus Christ, you are able to reign in this life. In other words, you are able to get, you have authority over death. You have authority over sin. Or am I talking to you? You have authority over your flesh. You have authority over anything that would try to make you a slave. You can be a slave to your attitude. You can be a slave to how you grew up. You can be a slave to what your mother did to you or what your father did to you. You can be a slave to low expectation. You will be nothing. You will be like your father. And you are a slave to that voice. Even though you went to college, you still hear that voice. Even though you have a degree, even though you're living in a nice home, you still hear that voice, which was a voice of death. And Jesus sets you free so you can reign above that. That's why he said, my sheep, they hear my, they hear my what? They hear my voice. The voice of God is one of the keys to your destiny. That's why you have to learn of his voice. Because his voice is going to say, that's not for you. His voice is going to say, Get out of that mess. His voice is going to say, break up with that person. His voice is going to say, why do you keep lowballing yourself? Why do you keep living beneath your privilege? Why do you keep living like that? His voice will correct you. His voice, oh my God. His voice. His voice, you'll be in a meeting. And you say, God, I only, I'm only going to ask for this. And he's saying, oh, you of little faith. He's saying, ask for this. But God, I, God, I, nobody in my family has ever had that. He said, aren't you in my family? This is counter to anything that 
Anybody? There's no preachers in my family. Aren't you in my family? God, I'm the only one in the family that, 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 that has come to you. Aren't you in my family? That's how you know he's reconciling you. Listen, the fact that you are here and hearing this is a sign that he's reconciling you. The fact that you are getting this, because you don't even, watch this, you don't even know how you got here, some of you. You didn't even know who was going to be here. But the fact that he got you here is his process of reconciling you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <sighs> now, now, turn to Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to give you this quickly. Are you receiving this in your spirit? Are, are you receiving this in your spirit? Say yes. Talk to me, please. Talk to me, please. So, I want to give you this for your notes. In order for you to reign, you have to know what God's original intent was. See, if, 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 if you don't know what God's original intent was, you'll always think he's bothering you. Why, you, you, you. why is this person asking me to come to church? Why is this person asking me to lead? Why is this person asking me to come up to a higher level? It's God. It's God trying to get from you what he invested in you before you were in your mother's womb. And so he keeps bothering you. He keeps bugging you. That's why you're dissatisfied with your life. In other words, he won't allow you to be satisfied until you come into what he already designed for you. And so, in the beginning, he set something up, Genesis 126. He says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. I want you to get this down in your notes. The real you is like God. That's why you'll be in situations and you'll say, yo, this ain't even me, because it's not God. The real you is the nature of God. In other words, you have his nature. God. You are like, I'm standing on my toes to say this, you are like him. That is why you can create something out of nothing. Because when God looked at nothing, he said, I see something. But that's like you. That's why you can be, oh God, you can be in your worst situation and bring something out of nothing, not because you're good, but because you're like him. And when he, when you, when you, when then when something appears, you will take the next step of creative ability. You'll learn how to form it. So creating and forming are two different things. And so what I'm saying to you is that you have the genius of God in your clothes. Oh, my goodness. And then he says this. Watch me. Watch me here. This, what I'm about to read, is the most important declaration ever made regarding mankind. If you don't know it, you can't embrace who you really are. When he said, let them have dominion. When he said that, Elder Howard, he was saying, let them have kingdom. This declaration captures the motivation, the nature, the purpose, and mandate beyond mankind's creation. 
You will never be satisfied if you are not expressing the kingdom. You don't believe me. If it were not so, then why did Jesus say, seek ye first the kingdom? Because everything, I'm going slow, everything that you are, everything that you will be is tied up in that kingdom. That's why he said, seek the kingdom first. Your peace is tied up in the kingdom. That's why he said the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy produced by the Holy Ghost. Everything that you need is tied up in the kingdom. You cannot reign if you don't even know what the kingdom is. How can you take authority if you're ignorant? How can you take authority if you... Every week you guessing who you are. That's how people can take advantage of They say, oh, I can take advantage of her. She don't even know who she is. Oh, I can manipulate them on this contract. They don't even know what the, they don't even know what the going rate is. You can't live without knowing what the going rate is. You are royalty. You can't be like Harry and Meghan. Now, God doesn't have a kingdom where you're saying your highness and all that, but he's saying you can't afford to shed your royalty. The price, the price, and make some t-shirts. Sam, you don't have. I don't, I've been. I done seen drug addicts. You done lost nieces and nephews and you talking about shed your royalty. The devil is like you listen, you don't have time to be thinking about whether you're royal or not. I'm going to settle the issue. You are a royal priesthood. You are a You are a holy nation. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You are the king's kids. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your father got it. Your father is the owner of the universe. Now, now watch this. If you, if you give up your assignment, then that means you can't do what God wanted you to do. I don't, watch this, this is what we say. I don't want to do all that. That's too much. Here, here's another one. You think you better than me. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, why are you doing all that? I ain't never pray like that. It don't take all that. rock you been under? Did you, did you, do you know anything about the devil? Have you seen what he's done to my family? Have you seen what he's done to my people? Have you seen what he's done to my school systems? Have you seen how he messed up the money? Have you seen how he messed up our daughters? Have you seen how he got folks confused about their sexuality? You don't know whether you are good. Have you, have you seen it? And he get them in, he get, and he in elementary school with that mess. And you saying, it don't take all that. This, well, Jesus said, well, I'm going to go ahead and listen to Jesus. He said, pray like this. Thy kingdom. Oh, <laughs> y'all just got the revelation. Thy will. 
shoot somebody in your family on drugs, you say, thy kingdom, thy will, on earth. God, we got a good church. God, we got a good church. Bishop, we got a good church. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I ain't going to listen to you. I'm going to listen to Jesus. Shoot, even if my children be talking the wrong stuff, I ain't listening to them. You do what I said. I'm your father. Get up. Sit down. Do what I said do. I'm going to listen to Jesus. Seek ye first. Oh, oh my God. And his. Oh, we about to get, we about to get tricky now. And all of these things. Now watch this. Now watch this. This is how the devil mess you up. He have you chasing what God will give you. Now I'm going to flip on the other side. Why are you doing that? <laughs> no, 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 no. Why are you doing that when he can give you what they chase it? Now watch this. Was was Beyonce in Adam when Adam sinned? It said all men were in Adam. That means they were in his seed. So when Adam fell, the whole earth fell. Was Jay-Z in Adam? Uh, see, y'all, see, y'all, don't get slow on me. See, when I start bringing pop culture, now you know you watch a lot of TV, and now you getting slow. Wait a minute. I don't even know if I want to say that. See, that's what's wrong with us. You unsure. You, say, well, let me correct your lack of certainty. The Bible says that all were in Adam. He was the father of the human race. So when he fell, everybody fell. Y'all like that teaching? You, you understand? When he fell, everybody fell. Jay-Z fell. Beyonce fell. Oprah fell. Ellen fell. Are you hearing my say? He said, all, all were in Adam. So that means that all need the kingdom. So, so what you are really looking for is what you lost. You never lost heaven. You never had it. You keep saying, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. I want to. That's the religious teaching. If he wanted you to go right to heaven, he would have killed you after he saved you. But he left you here, Mook. Rashida. He left you here, Ra. He left you here because he wanted you to be a disciple. Now, what's a disciple? The Greek word for disciple is mathematics, the root word. That means you got to learn some formulas. Oh, I'm talking now. You got to, love is not natural for us. Giving is not natural if we don't learn it. So being a disciple of Jesus is about learning his system. Learning how his kingdom operates. You need formulas and God will give you some problems so you can learn how the formula works. You thought he gave you problems because he was trying to destroy you. He was trying to fix you. Trying to help you work some of this stuff out. So, you, so your real, watch this. So all of your motivation is tied up in the greatest declaration ever made concerning man. Let me give you a definition of the kingdom. Here it is.
It is, and if you don't get it, don't say, what, I ain't get that. No, don't say that. Just get the CD. It is the governing influence of a king over a territory, impacting it with its will, his purpose, his intent, watch this, producing a citizenry. God is not interested in just producing members. Producing a citizenry who reflect the king's culture and manifest the nature of his glory. I'll say it to you one more time. The kingdom is the governing influence of a king over a territory, impacting it with its will, his purpose, and his intent, producing a citizenry of people who reflect the king's culture and manifest the nature of his glory. Let me give you a short definition. The kingdom is God's reign through God's people over God's place. The kingdom is God's reign through God's people over God's place. i tell you what the Bible is. The Bible is a legal document. It's not a, just a devotional book that you cry over. The Bible is a legal document and it contains a will for an offspring. That's you and me, sons and daughters. Otherwise known as a testament. The subject is about a king. His kingdom, royal family, a kingdom established on earth, a kingdom lost on earth, a kingdom restored on earth, a kingdom that has come, and a kingdom that is coming. I will say that to you one more time. See, you can only be taken advantage of when you're ignorant. The devil knows when you don't know. And even if you do know, he's going to try you to see what you know. And a lot of us sabotage our lives because we don't have, a, say, enough truth. Enough truth. You can't depend on your pastor. You, 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 you there's too much stuff coming at you. I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but if you're one of those types of people that a lot of stuff is coming at you, you got generational stuff coming at you, you got drugs coming at you, you got addictions coming at you, you got neighborhood stuff. It's too much stuff coming at you for you not to be able to live free. And what I know is that the truth sets you free. So, let me give you this. When the kingdom breaks through any arena, the options change. I want you to get this. Don't look at me funny. You are a kingdom citizen. And when you break through for your family, when you break through for your neighborhood, and when you break through for your job, the options for everybody around you changes. God, y'all ain't hearing me. Those who were hopeless now become hopeful. Those who were dying now see life. Those who were controlled by death realize that they can now be free. So when you come on the scene, I hope I'm talking to somebody, when you come on the scene, the options change. God. When Jesus came on the scene, the options change. God, 
If the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, is in your clothes, wherever you go, the kingdom comes. Oh my goodness. That means, that means, that means, that means hope for people changes. That means who they could become changes. That means, that means their awareness, God. That means what could happen to them. See, 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 this is the fear that I live in. Who would be a failure if you never step into your stuff? Who can't become if you don't read the books? What happens if you don't write the book? What happens if you didn't take the right job? What happens if you don't work in an area of your purpose? What happens? That's what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of not fulfilling that assignment. And so what I'm saying to you is that the kingdom changes everything. Put uh, Job 36 verse 7 up on the screen. This is how God thinks of you. This is how God thinks of you. Job chapter 36 verse 7. Are you getting this? He does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous. In other words, when you got saved, you became the righteousness of God. When you be, that means you don't work for your righteousness. That means through Jesus Christ, you are now in right standing with God. You ain't got to work this thing out yourself. You don't have to. Uh, he did it for you. His eyes are always on you. You are the total focus of God. That's why you can't do what you want. That's why you can't go anywhere you want. That's why you can't live any way that you want. You are the total focus of God. His eyes are always on the righteous. Now watch this. But they are on the throne with kings. In other words, God has enthroned you. You don't even realize how royal you are. See, when you get this in your spirit, your circumstances will begin to change. Your environment. So we go to work. We, we do the opposite. We go to work very hard on our circumstances, but don't work on ourselves. A man told me this before. He said, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work harder on yourself. Work harder on yourself. And sometimes it's not that the people around you change. You changed. Isn't that amazing that you can change? Isn't that amazing that you can become something that you never thought you could become? When you get the truth of the word, he gives you a revelation that blows your mind to different lengths and whiffs and breaths. So he says, you are seated with me forever so if you are seated with me forever then why are you scared he done already dealt with eternity he has authority over death hell and the grave so why do you live afraid that's why he's constantly telling us fear not fear not fear not fear not fear not fear not now here's what the devil does to us turn to genesis 3 this is what he does to you. And if you don't know his strategies, he will always undermine you. Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more cunning. This is the devil. He was more cunning or subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman... Has God told you, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now here's how Satan undermines your kingship. He's coming for what God told you. You got to hold on to what God told you. I know you in some stuff where you're just like, God, I don't even want to live like this. But you got to hold on to what he said. Because the devil is coming to poke at what he said. Did God say? Now real, realize this. Satan hates God. 
And his tactic of getting back at God is to get you. So as long as he can focus on you, he says, oh, God, I got your children. But here's the strategy that I'm telling you that you got to equip yourself with. You have to be solid in the word. You have to be sure of what he told you. So how do you get sure? You get sure by repeating it to yourself over and over and over and over again so that it becomes a part of who you are. The word has to become a part of who you are. Now remember, the second strategy that the devil comes with is this. Number one, he's coming for the word. Here's the second thing that he comes with. Suggestion. You really think you're going to die if you drink with me tonight? You really think something bad will happen if we just do a little bit? Just this once. And then once turns into twice, twice turns into three times, three times. So he's, he, he, and, and guess what? The devil is persistent. He, he, he keeps coming. He keep, why? Because he's trying to make you weak. Now here's the thing that he's really after. He's fine with you attending church. He's fine with you singing songs. But here's where he wants to laugh at us. I'm going to laugh at you when you go home. I'm going to laugh at you on Monday and on Tuesday. But the kingdom is not just about your spiritual life. The kingdom wants reign over every area of your life. You know the stuff that you keep in the closet that you say, I'm down with God, but I ain't giving him this. He'll never let you go until you give him all of it. Because you got to realize this. In the kingdom, you don't own anything. Watch this. It's already provided. <clears throat> Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's already provided. So what happens is he gives you everything you need, not want. He gives you everything you need to fulfill his plan. And the more you delight yourself in him, your desires become his desires. So you become in sync with what he would want for you. And he'll show you, I would like you to have that. When you, you, you have that, see, he wants you to have that relationship. Son, she's for you. Daughter, he's for you. Son, I want you to start getting up a little earlier and talking to your kids about this. Because what? Because he, once you get in that realm, you get into a realm where you are now a friend of God. But the devil, he like, ah, uh, as long as they don't know about the kingdom, I'm comfortable with them just coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. And you know what happens when you just keep coming and going? You get religious on top of religious, religious on top of religious, religious on top of religious. And you missed the phone call that came through me this week. A parent called me and said, Mr. Barlow, my son has done something terrible. He was involved in a murder. But I, I knew I could talk to you 
because you seem like you have something different. What he was asking for, he wasn't apologizing for himself. He was asking, is there any mercy? He was come, but he, he, he didn't come to a church to get that. He made a call to a king. God, are y'all here? So when he made the call, his options changed. Now I'm going to bring it home to you. How many people want to call you? Here's the, here's, the, here's the other one. What would happen if they call? Oh, man, you got to go to your pastor with that. See, 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 when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, one of the first things that they lost was their integrity. So now, and, and, and here's the second thing, they begin to shift the responsibility to somebody else. Well, if it wasn't for this woman, I would never be like this. So he blames it on Eve. And then the woman said, well, if it wasn't for this snake, this wouldn't have happened. So when you get, when you're solid in Christ, this is what happens. You get your integrity back. You, you learn to embrace responsibility because he's saying, watch this, he's trying to bring you to a dimension that is beyond your career. You think that God can't pay you? I'm in a meeting the other day and this, 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 this the, the executive said, yeah, such and such is going to join the meeting. And when this brother comes into the meeting, he said, I know you. I remember when you were 19 years old. And he said, when I saw you up on the campus ministering to people, sharing the kingdom of God with other people, he said, if he could do that at 19, then I could do that. And he said, for these last 20 years, I've been thinking about what you were doing. And because I saw you doing it, I knew it was hope for me to become it. He said, and, and he said, and my father was a pastor. But I was embarrassed to become what my father was. But when I saw you. So what I'm saying to you, something powerful happens when people see you moving your stuff. And he's saying to you, don't worry about the money. Don't worry about how it's going to happen. The scripture says, you knoweth not. So you don't know how you're going to get above this stuff. But I promise you this, you will. You will. 